Hello students, welcome to the lecture on verbal and non-verbal communication and after the lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Discuss verbal and non-verbal communication. Describe the characteristics of non-verbal and verbal communication. Define relationship of non-verbal message with verbal message. Explain classification of non-verbal communication and verbal communication. Learn about guidelines for improving non-verbal communication. Let us start with an introduction to verbal and non-verbal communication. Communication in general, which is the process of sending and receiving messages that enables humans to share knowledge, attitudes and skills. Although we usually identify communication with speech, communication is composed of two dimensions, that is verbal and non-verbal. Non-verbal communication has been defined as communication without words. It includes apparent behaviors such as facial expressions, eyes, touching and tones of voice as well as less obvious messages such as dress, posture and spatial distance between two or more people. Everything communicates, including material objects, physical space and time systems. Although verbal output can be turned off, non-verbal cannot. Even silence speaks. No matter how one can try, one cannot not communicate. Activity or inactivity, words or silence all have messages value. They influence others and in turn cannot respond to these communications and are thus themselves communicating. A person who has eye to see and ears to hear may convince himself that no mortal can keep a secret. If his lips are silent, he chatters with his fingertips, betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. Commonly nonverbal communication is learned shortly after birth and practiced and refined throughout a person's lifetime. Children first learn nonverbal expressions by watching and imitating much as they learn verbal skills. Young children know far more than they can verbalize and are generally more adept at reading nonverbal cues than adults are because of their limited verbal skills and their recent reliance on the nonverbal to communicate. As children develop verbal skills, nonverbal channels of communication do not cease to exist although become entwined in the total communication process. Humans use nonverbal communication because words have limitations. There are numerous areas where nonverbal communication is more effective than verbal when explained the shape, directions, personalities are expressed nonverbally. Nonverbal signals are powerful. Nonverbal cues primarily express inner feelings. Verbal messages deal basically with outside world. Nonverbal messages are likely to be more genuine because nonverbal behaviors cannot be controlled as easily as spoken words. Nonverbal signals can express feelings inappropriate to state. Social etiquette limits what can be said, but nonverbal cues can communicate thoughts. A separate communication channel is necessary to help send complex messages. A speaker can add enormously to the complexity of the verbal message through simple non-verbal signals. Researchers in communication suggest that many more feelings and intentions are sent and received non-verbally than verbally. Mehrabian and Wiener following suggested that only 7% of messages sent through words with remaining 93 sent non-verbal expressions. Depending on author, verbal part goes up to 35%. In the lead up to the US elections, much has been said about the behavior, the policies and the words of Mitt Romney and President Obama. However, as nonverbal communication is responsible for between 55 to 90 percent of the messages we send and receive to others both consciously and unconsciously, it's worth observing the body language of these two candidates to see exactly what they're really feeling and thinking. Much like in the animal kingdom, these two move forward with a purposeful stride and an upright posture. And when it comes to the greeting, the power games are on. Romney stands rooted to the spot with a dominant handshake coming over the top. However, President Obama counterbalances that by stepping forward into his space and patting him on the arm, equalizing their power game. 
These type of greeting gestures are seen often in business and politics. And basically, he who pats last wins. That's the power game. Hand gestures reflect whether someone's being open and honest or they're hiding something or whether they want to dominate a situation or feel quite passive about it or even angry. Both men use open palm up gestures when they want to engage with their audience. And they also both use dominant hand gestures with palm face down when they really want to take charge and get their point across in a clear way. Obama brings his hands back to center after every hand gesture and uses his microphone against his chest, which suggests sincerity. At times, both have used finger pointing, which is a very negative gesture of taking control and often of blame. Recognising friend or foe in the animal kingdom is imperative for survival, but likewise it is in politics too. Identifying whether someone's giving you a real smile or if they've got hidden aggression underneath can be the difference between building great rapport with someone or understanding a competitive opponent. Both lip corners raise when it's a genuine smile and wrinkles appear around the eyes as the eyes contract. Unlike where there may be hidden aggression or controlled anger, where there may be baring of teeth or micro expressions of lowering of eyebrows, tightening of the mouth or even curling of the lip or lip pressing. These are something to watch out for. Where there's a pulling across the shoulders in clothing can often mean that someone's very tense and are pulling their shoulders forward to protect themselves. This is a defence mechanism and is used as a barrier. Hand clasping alongside fiddling with objects such as a pen can suggest a high level of anxiety also. Other signs of nervous anxiety are lip licking and swallowing, which means that the mouth has become very dry. Noticing how people relate to the people closest to them and the proximity and space between them can tell you an awful lot about how able someone is to relate to people. The distance between people can relate to something going on in their relationship or it can relate to how somebody actually relates to everybody. Communication, after all, is an art form and it's something that we all need to learn. It's not always naturally gifted to us. Being able to recognise these body language signals and gestures enables you to tell whether somebody's feeling confident or whether they're feeling nervous or anxious or maybe even being deceptive. So it's very, very useful in politics but also in business. Mitt Romney and President Obama have both shown tenacity and stability and their body language has been powerful incorporating warmth, confidence and power. And there's only a small gap between them as to who really is ahead in the body language stakes. Let us first talk about verbal communication. All forms of communication can be categorized as either verbal or non-verbal. In turn, both verbal and non-verbal communication can be subdivided into either vocal or non-vocal. Much of the communication that takes place between people is verbal, that is, it is based on language. Verbal communication of the vocal category, it includes spoken language. Non-vocal verbal communication involves written communication as well as communication that is transmitted through transmitted through sign language, finger spelling, braille or other similar alternatives to verbal language. Communication has been called the transfer of meaning from one mind to another because meanings exist in the human mind. They cannot be shared or communicated except through some external vehicle. 
The human body is capable of making sounds and movements which in turn can create a system of vehicles for sharing inner meanings and ideas with others. In general terms, such elements that codify meaning are called signs. The study of such signs is called semiotics. Semiotics, sometimes called semiosis or semiology, theory or study of science, specifically the theoretical relationship between language and science or symbols used in the transmission of language and application of linguistic principles to object other than natural language such as facial expression or religious ritual. Academic study focusing on both the signification of language, assigning and deriving meaning from science as well as its codification or the attachment of rules and procedures for correct use. The foundation of human communication is speech, a natural capability but one that requires learning in a cultural context to make it mutually understandable with others. Signs are non-verbal units of expression. A natural sign is a physical indicator such as smoke as an indication of the presence of fire. Signs also are called signals or cues. Semiotics identifies three types of signs, symbols, indices and icons. A symbol stands in place of an object. It may be a physical object such as a flag standing for patriotism and national pride, a cross with strong religious meaning for Christians, even the Nike swoosh or the McDonald's arches. Or it may be a word or a phrase such as the Allahu Akbar printed in Arabic on flags or headbands. Symbols often have a metaphorical quality such as a symbol of water as a sign of life or purity as in the ritual washing in religious ceremonies. An index points to something beyond itself. It is an indicator such as words like big and arrows. An index also is sometimes called a natural sign because the relationship between the word and what it signifies is natural, such as smoke being an indexical sign of fire. An icon is a representation of an object that produces a mental image of the object represented. Nonverbal communication. While verbal communication is much studied and is the focus of much applied attention in areas ranging from journalism to governance to entertainment, the fact is that human beings communicate more through non-verbal means. Some estimates are that so-called body language accounts for 65, 70, even 90 percent of human communication. Using the 70 percent figure for body language, the voice accounts for another 20 percent or so and specific words only about 10 percent. Nonverbal communication is hugely important in human interaction. Nonverbal communication also is bound to culture. In particular, there are differences among cultures and nationalities about the relative value of speech versus silence, the relative value of talk versus action, the social role of small talk or gossip, and the role of animation, rhyme, and exaggeration in speech. Because of these differences, the study of verbal and nonverbal communication always must be done within a social or cultural context. As noted, nonverbal communication may be vocal, focusing on vocal characteristics such as pitch, rate and so on, or non-vocal, focusing on body language, environment, attire and the like. Some linguists identify an aspect of nonverbal communication called paralanguage. This refers to a range of non-linguistic elements of speech such as facial expressions, gestures, the use of time and space and so on. However, most linguists adhere to stricter categorization. Commonly, the study of nonverbal communication is divided into several specific categories. Kinesics, simplistically called body language, deals with physical movements, sometimes called affective displays. This study applies traditional linguistic principles to the body as a whole or to specific parts, particularly the face, hands and arms. It also deals with posture in standing and sitting, as well as with eye and facial expressions, such as the arching of eyebrows or the rolling of the eyes. Kinesics varies culturally. Kinesics generally refers not to sign language, relies on gestures and expressions in a grammatical context as an alternative to spoken language, but it is associated with the use of emblems and physical gestures that support or reinforce what is said verbally. Oculistics is closely related to kinesics. Oculistics deals with eye behavior as an element of communication. Some aspects of oculistics deal with a static or a fixed gaze versus dynamic eye movement. This so-called eye contact is the subject of much interpretation by the observer, making it difficult to predict its exact communication impact. The uses of nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication provides individuals and groups with many options for representing their messages. Here are some of the uses of nonverbal communication. To create impressions beyond the verbal element of communication, 
kinesics, chronomics, vocalics, environment. To repeat and reinforce what is said verbally, oculistics, kinesics. To manage and to regulate the interaction among the participants in the communication exchange, kinesics, oculistics, proxemics and synchrony. To express emotion beyond the verbal elements, kinesics, oculistics, haptics, vocalics and proxemics. To convey relational messages of affection, power, dominance, respect and so on, proxemics, oculistics, haptics. To promote honest communication by detecting deception or conveying suspicion, kinesics, oculics, oculistics, vocalics. To provide group or social leadership by sending messages of power and persuasion, kinesics, vocalics and chromesics. Not all communication is done with words. Dogs wag their tail to show when they're happy. Cats put back their ears when they're not. People look at you to show they are listening and smile when they like you. You can tell if someone is shy, excited or blue long before you talk to them. Why do you wave to people you know? What does putting up your hand mean in class? We use nonverbal communication every day in every conversation. We even use it when we are on the phone. Many children with special needs have trouble making eye contact, so they miss a lot of the nonverbal cues. It's like flight deck personnel on an aircraft carrier. Without words, they direct jets worth millions of dollars just with the movement and position of their arms. Let's now discuss the characteristics of nonverbal and verbal communication. People who have the ability to communicate verbally and nonverbally have the best chance at obtaining successful relationships in their personal and their professional lives. Nonverbal communication. Body language helps to communicate verbal message as well as connect and build stronger relationships with those around itself. While nonverbal communication can enhance relationships, it can also distance and cause unnecessary confusion if what we say does not match up to body language. There are four types of nonverbal communication. A sight to see. Through facial expressions, people can convey emotions to others without saying a word. Emotions such as happiness, sadness, disgust, fear, anger and surprise are universal facial expressions with the same meaning across all cultures. Maintaining the appropriate eye contact goes hand in hand with facial expressions as it communicates whether one or both parties are interested in the conversation as well as a means to keep the conversation going. For example, a person who continually breaks eye contact during a conversation to glance at the clock or the door may be sending this message that he wants to exit the conversation. Stay in tune. Intonation refers to the, the way a person's voice rises and falls while speaking. It is used to put emphasis on a particular word or detail as we are speaking or to express a question or excitement according to the International Association of Conference Interpreters. Speaking through gestures. A form of nonverbal communication that may alter other people's perceptions when conversing is bodily movement, posture, and subtle movements. Easy does it personal space is a large part of nonverbal communication and can be used to express intimacy, dominance, or aggression. Moving on to the next topic, let us discuss the relationship of nonverbal message with verbal message. We have all heard the statistics several times before that body language accounts for more than 50% of communication. It is fair to say that both verbal and nonverbal communication impact on the success of relationships. For a start, if we want to communicate sincerely, then verbal and nonverbal communications have to be congruent with one another. In other words, we cannot growl, I love you, while standing arms crossed and eyes rolling. Inversely, we cannot stand with arms open as if inviting a hug as the words, I am finding you insufferable lately, leaves your lips. Well, you can do all of the above if you are merely indulging in a spot of humorous sarcasm, but you have, if you are not saying or doing any of the jest, then the mixed message will leave the recipient feeling unsure of where both stand. Spencer Kelly measured peaks and valleys in the brain waves of participants to understand where the body language that is inconsistent with the accompanying verbal communication is picked up by the brain.
To test the way the brain processes verbal and non-verbal communication, brain waves were monitored with the use of an electroencephalograph. Kelly found that if a participant had to process a sentence with an inappropriate word such as he spread his toast with socks, the brain waves would create a valley, a downward dip on the graph as a result. The dip was classified as 400 in measurement. The researcher found that if a speaker's gestures and verbal communication were incongruent, inconsistent with one another, then the same size value of N4400 was produced by the brain waves. Let's now discuss the classification of nonverbal communication and verbal communication. Nonverbal communication is a process of communication that occurs without words. Communication which occurs through body movements, space, time, voice patterns, color layout, and design of human surroundings. Kinesics, Proxemics, time language, paralanguage, physical context. Kinesics is the study of body physical movements. It is the way body communicates without words and it is occupying a major aspect of nonverbal communication. Process. When we communicate thought process and attitude is transmitted in the form of body movements by which inner state of mind is reflected in movements. Thus we can realize these expressions by face and eyes, gestures, posture and physical appearance. Facial expression is the first way to communicate, particularly eyes and eye movement. We can express happiness, surprise, fear, anger and sadness, everything through the eyes. The gesture is body parts, especially arms, legs, hands and head convey meaning. All these movements are made rationally along with speaking and not made with any intention. Body shape is related to biological factor and it is natural but posture is how we stretch body in different styles. Body shapes are classified into three ways and are ectomorph which is thin, youthful and tall, then the mesomorph in muscular fit body and finally endomorph which is fat, round and soft. Appearance includes style, hairstyle, clothes, jewelry, cosmetics and such styles which we include in daily life by which we communicate how we want to project ourselves. Proximus it involves how we arrange personal space and what we arrange in it. They create meaning in mind and others, others mind as well. They are also called personal space language which involves how we are maintaining relationships with the person with intimate space, personal space, social space and finally public space. Time language. Time language is all about the meaning we convey through time. In western countries time equates money because their business culture is like that. The same thing apply may differ for other cultures. Therefore time language is associated with the culture as well. Paralanguage. It involves how we say something in different pitch, tone and voice modulation such as slow or fast. Based on voice language, we infer people, background and personality. Physical context. It refers to the human being's surroundings, the color, the layout and the design of the physical environment. Because nonverbal messages are inherently continuous, ambiguous, multi-channel and sometimes unintentional, it can be tricky to accurately decode them. Add to this the fact that the meaning for any nonverbal behavior can vary by situation, culture, and gender, and to begin to understand why we are so often misread the behavior of others. The following guidelines can help to improve the likelihood that will make accurate interpretations of others' behavior, and that own behavior will lead others to perceive of nonverbal messages correctly. Interpreting nonverbal messages. When interpreting nonverbal messages, here are some things we might want to remember. Do not assume. When interpreting others' nonverbal clues, do not automatically assume that a particular behavior means a certain thing. Except for the category of emblems, there is no automatic meaning of nonverbal behavior. And even the meaning of emblems varies culturally. There is much room for error when people make quick interpretations or draw rapid conclusions about an aspect of nonverbal behavior. Consider influences. Consider cultural, gender and individual influences when interpreting nonverbal cues. We have shown how nonverbal behavior varies widely based on the culture or the expectations. Pay attention to nonverbal communication. Pay attention to multiple aspects of nonverbal communication and their relationship to verbal communication. We should not take nonverbal cues out of context. In any one interaction, we are likely to get simultaneous messages from a person's eyes, face, gestures, posture, voice and use of space and touch. Use perception checking. The skill of perception checking. Let us see if interpretations of another person's message is accurate or not. By describing the non-verbal behavior, have noticed and tentatively sharing interpretation of it, we can get confirmation or correction of us interpretation. It may be helpful to use perception checking when faced with gender or cultural variations in nonverbal behavior. 
Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Nonverbal communication has been defined as communication without words. It includes apparent behaviors such as the facial expressions, eyes, touching and tones of voice, as well as less obvious messages such as dress, posture and spatial distance between two or more people. Communication has been called the transfer of meaning from one mind to another because meanings exist in the human mind. They cannot be shared or communicated except through some external vehicle. A natural sign is a physical indicator, such as smoke as an indication of the presence of fire. Signs also are called signals or cues. Maintaining appropriate eye contact goes hand in hand with facial expressions, as it communicates whether one or both parties are interested in the conversation as well as a means to keep the conversation going. Kinesics is the study of body physical movements. It is the way our body communicates without words and it is occupying a major aspect of non-verbal communication process.